Dexter feels safe with Hannah. Let's let that sink in for a moment. Safe with Hannah McKay. Spree killer. And you know what? After all they've been through, I believe it. At least for now. I know that some people are like, I mean, I get people uh, tweet me, Twitter me all the time saying, not all the time, but a lot of times saying, what about Rita? I got to tell you, Rita never gave Dexter this, and, I, and she never could. Uh, welcome to the Dexter Wrap-Up Podcast. This is our ninth one for episode 709. Helter Skelter, written by Tim Schlotman, directed by Steve Schill. Can you believe it? Hey, I'm Scott Reynolds. I'm one of the writers on Dexter, also your host. And uh, let's let's think about this moment. We, we've we killed our big bad Isaac in the ninth episode. Where are we going to go next? I mean, I'm not going to tell you, but anyway, let's get down to business. Here, here's what we have in store for you this episode. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, the episode at hand, 709, Helter Skelter. Then uh, we're going to talk with, are you ready for this? Ray Stevenson, Isaac Serco, this guy, man, women love him, men want to be him, you know, some men love him too, and on top of it all, this guy is good people. So after we spend some time with him, we're going to talk about last week's episode, Argentina, and answer the questions you guys posted up on Facebook and Twitter. Um, Erica Mittman, the writer of that episode, will be here, along with showrunner Scott Buck. Sound good? Good. Now about this episode... Let's talk about Isaac's death, man, right? It uh, it evolved over the years. We broke the story of the season. And uh, Dexter's, and we saw Dexter's interactions with, with, uh, with Isaac. At the start, you know, when we were, when we sort of crafted who Isaac was and this big Ukrainian guy, we were thinking of his death in, as, as a gangster, as a different sort of killer, but we were still thinking of his, de- his death more in terms of something, you know, more akin to Trinity. After a series of, of uh, cat and mouse thrilling moments, Dexter would eventually get Isaac on his table. I mean, even if the table wasn't a table, the, the idea was sort of the same. But as we broke each episode and then saw what, what Ray Stevenson was bringing to the screen day after day, we realized this big bad had more to give Dexter. It was more complicated. I mean, Dexter, I mean, Isaac already, Isaac wasn't the normal serial killer that Dexter always ends up with, you know, ends, ends up going toe-to-toe with. And his secret life, that he was gay, that's right, people, in case you missed it, Isaac Serko, gay. Uh, which, according to our research, was a big no in the Ukrainian mafia. I mean, they would like tattoo uh, gay and other and other epitaphs across your forehead if you were if you were gay and you were caught and you were in the criminal sort of thing. So uh, that was a big no for them. But but that was the thing that was going to help Dexter. I mean, seriously, who in the world would have thought that Isaac Serko, Ukrainian godfather, would end up helping Dexter with his love life? <clears throat> if you think back about this episode, we see we see Dexter struggling to share to talk. To bond, you know, we learn we learn from him that Dexter doesn't bond. But from the beginning, when Dexter was on the slice of life, remember with with, uh, with Hannah, and she's she's terrified on the boat, and then she asks him what he's scared of. tries She tries to get him to talk, but uh, Dexter has a hard time. I mean, he can't and and won't. Then later, Isaac overhears Hannah say, "I miss you." You know, when they're FaceTiming, and Dexter stares at her FaceTime image of Hannah and struggles with what to say, and ends up saying. Likewise, to Hannah. <laughs> I mean, the the only thing that could have been worse, I think, was like ditto. But I mean, Dexter is more talky in this episode when he's got a gun to his face, staring death right in the eyes. He's much more comfortable with that than he is talking to to the to a family that he likes. But it's at the end after Dexter after Isaac is double crossed by George, he gets shot. Right, that that uh, Dexter really starts to open up, and it makes sense. Dexter is more open to people who are dying. <laughs> Isaac asks Dexter why he's so afraid to open up to Hannah. When he's not afraid of death. And Dexter responds, it was pretty telling, that, that, that death has always calmed him. It's soothing, predictable, inevitable. With a knife in his hand, it's his to control. And Isaac rightly concludes that, you know, Dexter has some intimacy issues. <laughs> uh, that, that, that what Dexter finds when he's about to kill someone and he's, he's able to be open with them is that this is an intimacy that never lasts. Dexter could just move on to the next one. Uh, but now with Hannah... Dexter no longer has any control, and Dexter doesn't like being out of control. If you remember a few episodes ago, uh, I think it was 702 or 703, I don't know what the number was, 
But um, Deborah was uh, was bringing up how how being a serial killer and a father to Harrison is dangerous, and how sometime at one point Harrison could get in a lot of trouble. Like, things get out of control, and Dexter answers, "Everything is in my control." And he really wants to believe that, or at least form a life in which that's true. But we all know that's impossible. I mean, we've seen it on sh- on screen, right? He's lost control many times. But it's the truth that Dexter wants to live into. And Hannah, you know, she just shakes him up. And Isaac knows this. He may not be able to figure out what kind of killer Dexter is. He asks him that again and again throughout the episode. But he knows what makes Dexter uncomfortable. So as Isaac bleeds out on his boat, you know, Dexter's doing a familiar thing, taking a guy out to go dump I uh, dump him out in the ocean. Um, Isaac shares how with Victor, Isaac no longer had to hide. Didn't have to, you know, he didn't have to hide who he was like he did the rest of his life with the Ukrainian mobsters. But Dexter isn't sure that it's worth it. Is it, is it good to have loved and lost, especially if that causes pain? Dexter asked him flat out, was it worth it? All the pain and agony that Isaac felt when Dexter, you know, killed Victor. Because that's a significant part of being out of control that Dexter doesn't like. I mean, this all stems from the day when Dexter saw his mother ripped apart by chainsaws, it's a bad day. And he, he felt pain and fear that absolutely spun him out of control, so much so that he became what he is today, a killer who holds life and death in his hands, who controls others' destinies and doesn't have to fear intimacy. So the thought that Isaac's few years with Vincent were worth all the pain he got these past few weeks was, was, was ludicrous. And his experience is it's stay away from pain. And then Dexter admits that, however, that Hannah, he's starting to wonder if it's worth the risk, which causes Isaac to tell Dexter... There might be hope for him yet. And then he dies. I mean, it's not a kill scene. And, and a lot of kill scenes have changed Dexter and, the, and changed the trajectory of his relationships and his, his talks with, you know, you, you think back to, to the, uh, the coyotes when he, when he had the married couple on the table and it changed how he was going to deal with, Han, or with, uh, with Rita. This was, this, this was a death scene that changed Dexter. And thus, Dexter gives Isaac what he wants. Uh, you know, a reconnection to Victor as he as he dumps his body in the same place he put Victor. It's very sweet. It's a, that's a, that's a, I guess that's how serial killers are sweet to one another. So afterwards, Dexter finds Han in the hospital, who's you know had her own run in with uh, with the the, the uh, Koshka Brotherhood, and she's been actually saved by Deborah. And Dexter opens up to Hannah. He answers the question that she asked him on the slice of life: "What scares you?" She asked him: "Have you ever been scared?" And Dexter finally shares what scared him when he lost his mother. Two things. And the second one was when he thought he might never see Hannah again. That's right, ladies. You can sigh. I, I you know, I sighed when I saw it. What a sweet guy. How sweet. De- uh, but Dexter, Dexter makes a turn. He, he's learned to share and how to begin to live when things are live life when things are out of control, out of his control, just like normal people have to do every day. It's a, it's a good day. It was a rough day, but it's a good day for Dexter. Let's go over a few other things we learned this episode. You know, uh, there's a new serial killer in town, the Phantom, kills with fire. He doesn't he doesn't like Basso very much. We also learned that Dexter is a terrible, terrible shot with a gun. We learned that when Dexter eats a burrito, Dexter eats a mother flipping burrito. That thing was man. You ever seen anybody like jam a burrito in their mouth like that before? We also learn, speaking of food, that when Hannah, that Hannah makes a mean fried green tomato with mayhaps a bit too much pepper, thanks to her grams. We learn that Deborah's on Xanax, which makes sense. We also learn, uh, for the soccer fans out there, not to say that we don't always leave out sports, Juan Pablo is a professional Colombian soccer player. How about that? Caffrey, the hitman, according to Isaac, is a... Dexter, <laughs> Dexter answers, I miss you with likewise. Also, fights in strip clubs are awesome. Right, I don't know if you noticed. There's a there's a woman in that scene when uh, uh, Quinn goes to see George, and they 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 have their little altercation. That there's a woman who's actually on the pole right in front of that mirror when uh, when uh, George and Quinn go flying through it and glass everywhere. Fights in strip clubs are awesome. <laughs> Finally, uh, also Matthews and Laguerta are teaming up, which suddenly makes Laguerta a much scarier thing to be reckoned with. And Isaac is now dead. Boo-hoo, sniff, sad. <laughs> anyway, enough of this stuff. What do you say we go to the source and talk to Ray Stevenson himself? Let's hear what he has to say. I think you're going to like this. Ray Stevenson, people. Hello, A. We're sitting here with, uh, I'm sitting here with Ray Stevenson. How you doing, Ray? I'm doing fabulously well, thank you. Where are you at right now? You're uh, definitely not in I'm at Los Angeles. 
Lisa, watching the sun just gently wait, work its way across the sky, about to settle down. It's, uh, but this, it's still um, it's a beautifully hot day. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Yeah, we're, I, I'm, uh, I'm sitting in an office looking at the Gower Gulch. I, uh, <laughs> you're, you're, you're winning, go. for sure. This is, it sounds beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me tell you, uh, everybody has been loving, I mean, obviously you know this, but uh, everybody's been loving what you've done on Dexter, on Isaac. Um, oh, well, thank you so much. I mean, I, I was still, I'm still bowled over by the, um, you know, by the faith that uh, yourself and the whole team put in me to sort of, you know, come in and do this character, which I was delighted for the opportunity to play. You know, what's amazing is uh, when we started talking about Isaac, um, about this this yep. character that that has this uh, vendetta, uh, for, you know, against Dexter. Yeah. Uh, you were like the the first name that came up in the room. So from oh, the wow. very beginning, we were thinking. Uh, we were thinking Ray Stevenson, and thank wow, you know. it's a great, it's a great honor. I mean, you know, series seven of such an incredible series, and such a, you know, not just American domestic, but globally as well. Um, you know, such an important and impactful piece of television. Um, you know, when when the when the opportunity came through, I I just I had to jump at it, especially given the character. I mean, that was it. I was just like. You know, playing a Russia, you know, the, uh, an oligarch who's also, you know, head of, you know, one of the heads of, the, of a big crime syndicate, and he's a very violent man. You go, yeah, okay, okay, okay. But then the reveal comes, and you go, oh, my word, I have to play it. I have to try it. <laughs> so I that... have to have a go because it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's, that's, that's, that's the cursor. That's the, the catalyst that goes, oh, my word. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I definitely want to, I, I want a shot at this. <laughs> so that, that, was the, that was the clincher, huh? That's interesting. It really was. Um, funny enough, because of Isaac's um, uh, sort of sexual persuasion, <laughs> that was the clincher. I mean, it was. Uh, I've been asked before because I've played a lot of, um, shall we say, sort of like violent men doing violent things to other violent men uh, yeah. in different scenarios, what have you. Know, and, and I don't believe in sort of you know the real hard men are never the ones who stand there going, "You better not, or else." Right. <laughs> They're the ones who uh, you know you, you you never even see them coming. Um, but uh, to play a, a full-on alpha male uh, who is a detached, stone-cold um, uh, killer, even uh, you know approaching the realms of Dexter, but from a different different viewpoint. But you know, there's this cold detachment they have with uh, the process of metering out death. But there's this side of him that had been opened by the, you know a person who became the love of his life, and rather than send a team of hitmen, which he could have well have done yeah. to find out who on earth dispatched uh, his partner, he went himself because he knows he can be damn sight more ruthless than any hitman. But also, it was so personal. You know, um, somebody had, had killed his his partner, the love of his life, and anybody in that situation, male or female, or male and male or whatever. It's the, the power of the, the emotions involved, the, the grief, the loss, the, the need for to, to wreak vengeance upon a, a, a killer. Um, but it was just great. I, I think I've been approached before in interviews saying, you know, I guess, Ray, you're, right, you know, you're, big, you know, you're a big guy, you're playing all these you know, big alpha males. I guess you'd never play a gay guy. It was a, just a throwaway <laughs> question. Yeah. But it rang warning bells in my head. And this is going back quite a few years. And... I turned to this interview and I said, well, I don't understand the car. You telling me that I couldn't play a human being in love with, in love with another human being. Right. Said, well, uh, I said, well, you telling me that I couldn't have, I play a, a human being who has feelings for another? I, said, I don't understand the question. Just, just like threw it right back at him because it was obviously <laughs> one of those leader questions. Yeah. I had no idea about this when it came up in Dexter. And then when uh, I was delivered the, um, the, uh, the sort of uh, the backstory of him and why, that's why I suppose that had a bit to play is just like I see him as a human being whose emotions are every bit as valid and true and his pain is every bit as valid and true, his need for vengeance. He just happens to be a stone cold ass killer and an alpha male as well. So yeah. it's like here's this man who's had to uh you know, guard it, this secret guarded for right. so long and yet he sent his his business partner, his partner is like he he sends him on a mission to Miami to go and handle some business. And he becomes a, one of Dexter's victims. Yes. And it's just, um, he can't believe it. So he's, uh, he, he heads out himself to, to, uh, to hunt down um, the killer. Yeah, yeah. And, and this, this relationship that Isaac has with, uh, with Dexter is so interesting because, you've, you know, Isaac's coming up against this guy that has this deep, dark secret. <laughs> yeah. And it's all, you know, he's all yeah. pent up. 
and then he meets this he meets you know Isaac he meets you who is this guy who has a secret but uh, is not necessarily pent up <laughs> in the same way he's not yeah, unemotional exactly. but but I suppose you know it's, the secret's not not pent up but um, it's com- it's like he, on one one path he's com- he's like completely free as a human being and yet yeah. he's free within a gilded cage. Um, and I suppose, you know, Dexter, uh, he gets a, a sense of release and freedom when he dispatches the ne'er-do-wells of the world. <laughs> but it's a cage as well. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think that uh, what's, the, what's the genius of the writing in this thing is that, you know, it's not just a sledgehammer breaking an egg at all. It's a very subtle development that brings these two who actually, you know, initially start to hunt each other once they find out who each other is. Uh-uh. Yeah. And they, they set out to actually annihilate the other one. But through that process, through actually their, not their differences, but their similarities, yeah. they reveal more about each other than any of them had either bargained for. And actually a bit of, you know, kinship, a bit of sort of birds of a feather sort of thing yeah. sort of happens. And, uh, uh, you know, oh my God, you're, yeah, we're, we're not the only ones. <laughs> it's like, but it's really, really well drawn. And, I, you know, it's wonderful. One, one of the things I noticed, uh, you know, there, there was, and this wasn't on the page a lot of times, you know, coming from the, the writer's room, was that um, Isaac has this way of eating in almost every scene. <laughs> you know, oh, from, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like even, <laughs> even one of the first scenes that we have, you know, you're eating, I think you're eating uh, Belugio oh, or something. Caviar. Yeah, eating some caviar. <laughs> and then when you sit down with Dexter in, ep- in episode five. Oh, yes, of course. Oh my word. You immediately go for his food, <laughs> and it's a, but it's a it's a. I suppose it is a very sort of I don't know hedonistic sort of quality. <laughs> sort of. Yeah, and it's it's uh, it's funny because uh, people comment a lot on on Dexter how when he eats it's animalistic and ravenous and I don't know it's it's uh, was this a conscious choice on your part uh, or. Well, you know, there were certain scenes which, unconsciously, I suppose, I suggested I would, I would, I would, I would have a biscuit with a coffee. I would obviously <laughs> have something. I would something because he, I think it was a, just a very sensual relationship with food yeah. in the set. Because he's a very, he's a very sort of sensual sort of guy. Uh, uh, dresses extremely well, very yeah. sartorial, very elegant. Uh, is a very tactile quality to him. He'll touch somebody's face very softly while he move, maneuvers the gun around for them to. <laughs> yeah. you know. um, so there's a there's a very there's a very gentle a gentle um, sort of clothing to what is a very very dark and when need be clinical matter of fact dispatcher of uh, of life. You know. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, what, what do you think it is about Isaac on your part, do you think, that uh, was able to draw so much out of Dexter, who's normally so closed? And, 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 wasn't necess- and Dexter wasn't necessarily looking for a relationship. This isn't like other seasons, in other words, you know, where, yeah. like with the Trinity Killer, Dexter found a serial killer who, um, who, who was a family man and, 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 and was very successful in what he did. So Dexter was looking for a role model. But on Isaac, yeah. you sort of jumped him I a think- little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I think with Isaac is that it's it's more, it's a kind of subtle and very subliminal shock, really, that um, somebody who is similar to him in so many ways actually has no guard or um, uh, you know sort of shield yeah. when he uh, when he gets to talk to Dexter about this was his partner. This you know that Dexter you know. You didn't you didn't dispatch some some pedophile or some sort of you know raper of women or anything. yeah you know you killed somebody's the, the, somebody's heart somebody's love of their life yeah. there's a price there's a and it mattered and I think something got triggered in Dexter that, that the openness of this guy yeah. right with 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 him and he's he is being completely open whether it's like I'm being open with you because obviously I'm going to kill you <laughs> or I'm being open with you because. You know, it doesn't matter. I can actually be open with you, but you have to know there's a price to pay for uh, for this. Yeah. You know, and that it that it mattered. His life mattered to somebody to such an extent. Yeah, it's inter- yeah, that is interesting because the, the the only people that Dexter is able to be, for the most part, be very open with are people that are on his table. You know, because yeah. he he very yeah, much exactly. controls. You guys talk about that in uh, in episode in episode nine. Yeah, exactly. And there's this thing about you know what it actually does do, what how in a sense, liberating and yet 
to one life devastating <laughs> to another a chance to work through or even openly discuss or try to figure out and yet there's this cling filmed wrapped um, doomed body um, <laughs> that gives gives that person license to do that yeah. and yet um, you know one thing with I, well, one thing I mean, I you know, going into the series, nobody tells you what the full extent of the story is and how sure. it all pans out. Um, and you're obviously wondering, are you going to end up on this table <laughs> as such? Um, yeah. And you just leave it up to the lap of the gods and the writers. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> uh, and then what came through was this um, this journey that Dexter takes way out of his uh, his normal uh, modus operandi yeah. to actually deposit the dying Isaac. Um, in the same patch of sea where he uh, effectively dumped um, his his lover. Yeah. And yet yeah. their journey together out in the open ocean with only the stars above them. And I think it, it hinted that there are events that move us that are, you know, that don't stand up to demystification or trying to analyze or work out that are part of the movement of planets and stars that affect human beings. Yeah. There are, yeah. great, there are greater forces at work and... Even if anybody tried to challenge, uh, I, why did you do it? Why did you take Isaac back out? What, you just decided to like him all of us? No, there's something moving Isaac in a different direction. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something uh, new and um, exciting and probably uh, probably a little little terrifying as well. Well, e- even and on so, your... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just thinking, so an act like this becomes an unconscious act of kind of goodness. Yeah. Yeah, in a very dark world. Because, because I, I, let's let's talk about that moment on that boat. So you know, you've just you've just successfully taken care of two hitmen. You use Dexter to take care of those two, you know, yeah. bastard hit hitmen, and then then you get shot, of course, you know, by uh, yeah. by by yeah. George, George. <laughs> um, by gorgeous George. Is that what you said? <laughs> And yeah. then, no, no, no. He's just uh, it's, it's, he's wonderfully played. Yeah. I mean, oh my god, it was fantastic. It was yeah. such a yeah, it was such an interesting relationship between the two of you. That 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 this this poor guy just wants to get George just wants to get a job done, <laughs> and you yeah. have an entirely different agenda here in Miami. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. And great. the fact that I'd already sent Victor out to actually do George's job, <laughs> doesn't matter how much he, pro- he uh, uh, protests, and he thinks. He thinks George does protest too. Much. You know, it's like it doesn't matter. I think it's been doing this for under debt under your watch. So you know, um, I'm already uh, thinking uh, the worst of him anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so was it? Oh no, it was the boat. The boat scene. Um, yeah. The the way that the, what do you think it was about Isaac that wanted to you, the the final the final moment was what are you going to say to Hannah? You know here. Yeah. Here, you, 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 yeah. the way you sort of helped Dexter open up to this possibility of love in his life, because exactly, and I think it's a. I watched it, and even down, even that, it's, it's actually a very, very beautiful human scene. Yeah, two guys, um, because there's an honesty faced in the face of death or in in the face of this situation, and uh, there's an uh, can admit that you don't know. Or admit, you know, I'm feeling these things, and I, you know, but you're dealing with somebody who actually has felt them, and I think it's a lovely choice that right at the end, uh, Isaac's very last line is played on uh, uh, Dexter's face because every syllable is impacting in yeah. him to lead up to how it makes him feel with this person is alive. Yeah, because um, it, it's not a. Which is, uh, uh, and how he deals with this from that from that moment on is uh, is shown out when he he may he runs straight back to the hospital. I think it's it's an yeah. it's life affirming rather than death affirming. If you know what I mean. And in some in some ways, you're sort of walking. Isaac was walking Dexter toward love, and it wasn't it wasn't like a selfish moment. Like I, I want to experience something. It was. It was in some ways like a yeah. big brother <laughs> looking over someone yeah, and saying, exactly. well, "Yeah, exactly." It's kind of like you know, listen, just accept and open up to it because you really don't have a choice. If you think you've got a choice, you're going to mess it up. Yeah. If you give yourself over to it, it's worth everything and anything that follows. Yeah, that was. And I think until Dexter actually saw somebody who uh, really freely, openly admitted that the, that in order to that you know what's what led to the loss of everything, i.e., the loss of Isaac's life was worth it to have felt that deeply. 
Yeah. I mean, I've had friends in relationships, and they've said, you know, I'm, 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 you know they're playing negative like games. I'm not going to get too involved. I'm not doing this. I'm saying, Are you kidding? <laughs> One day of being properly open and, and involved with somebody is worth 20 years of never really knowing if you have a have or they have a have. You yeah. know, it's, um, it's, uh, you know, it's the bolder and it's the better, the better route. And it took a it took a violent gangster to help Dexter realize this. It's, it's weird, isn't it? It's yeah, a beautiful it, thing. It, it, took man, it took a man in love. It took a yeah. man who lost who lost something, but was still in love. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. And I think that's something that Dexter. I don't think he's ever really been faced with with that, and the fact no. that Dexter didn't dispatch him. You yeah. Know? How, um, let's talk about that for a second. How how ple- were you uh, uh, pleased when you found that out? Because nor- normally it is. You know the bad guy. I know. I know like I heard, I heard that most actors are absolutely delighted. Oh great! I, I end up on Dexter's <laughs> table. I was very pleased actually that I didn't because it was uh. just it was and in some way more human. I, I, I fantasized with the fact of what if Isaac had got Dexter on his table, <laughs> and you know, and at the last minute, rather than plunging the knife, he just turned and says. You know, uh, and, and but you know, telling him how much, what what, he, what the cost was that yeah. you know he killed somebody that, that was somebody's love, but and right the last minute, just telling him, you know, besides, you're just too pretty to kill. <laughs> <laughs> and then Isaac Isaac's jet beat, you know, beats off to the other side of the planet. There's this other dark force on the other side of the world, and Dex has left their cling film, but not dead, and going like, well, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been amazing. You know, so I think there was, you know, even in my, you know, sort of thoughts was like. And when they say, uh, when, I, when it panned out, you know, that this bond, this something was growing between, I thought, this is perfect. Because also, um, the fact that, yeah, Isaac is, uh, is, is, is a gay man. And it's, so it's nothing to do with, with sexuality or um, gangsterism or, it, or even the ability to, to be a cold blooded murderer. It's to do with men. And one has experienced something that the other one doesn't believe he's either worthy of or capable of, and yet something's happening to him that he can't explain, and he just needs to be told, don't try and work it out. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. And, um, you know, go for it. Embrace it. Well, you certainly had that moment on the dock, uh, yes. sort of like that, where you, had, you, you, shot, you shot the other hitman, and you had your gun, yeah. and there's Dexter. You could have you plugged him. And he, I, I, I said, but I said I'm a man of my word. Yeah. I think that's another thing that he's got a code that was stri- that struck Dexter. That this, you know, despite everything, he's a man of his word, and yeah. he knows that despite everything that he does, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's not a murder, he's not a, a murderer of, of innocence. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of like he has a code that he knows is his saving grace. Yeah. And I think with Isaac as well, business is business. But if he gives his word, it's his bond. It's, yeah. uh, it's like an, they're both, in a, in a way, kind of old warriors. Yes. You know, one working behind the scenes and one working up front. Yeah. So, you know, but dispatching the bad guys. Um, yeah. can, I, can I ask one more thing about, uh, like, uh, with Isaac? The, um, uh, that scene in the gay bar. <laughs> yep. When Dexter, Dexter's outside, he's, his whole life is upended. Everything's falling apart. Yes. Uh, and he and he pulls like, you know, a, a, a noob uh, job of he thinks he's going to walk into a bar, drug you and carry you out with cops around. He's just he's just overcome with all this weird emotion that he doesn't know how to handle. And he walks yeah, in he and he sees him. he'll just get away. He just bowled it through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of a really dumb plan on his part, but his emotions are 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 are, are ramping him up in a weird way. Exactly, but I think this is what it comes down to: is that uh, I just got a gun on his butt. The way Isaac is talking, yeah. nobody's ever talked to him like this. <laughs> yeah. That open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each of you sort of peel away at each other the whole, like the whole, the whole time. At the at the very beginning, yeah. the very beginning. Uh, I think it's uh, episode five after after Dexter visits you in jail. All right, Do you remember yeah. that when you guys are sitting? Uh, it's a, a, a amazing scene. The two of you facing off like that. You had that story about vengeance, and yet yeah. even in that moment, you're trying to figure out. Uh, You're trying to ma- yeah, they're trying to map out each other and realizing that they're both good chess players. Yeah, and why are you? And why did you do this? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not like other killers. You're not like anybody else I ever met. It's it's very it's very interesting that these two guys. Were, what what do, you, what do you think it was about Isaac that wanted to sort of tear apart the why Dexter does what he does? 
Well, I think uh, it's I think a, a little bit of mistrust. Yeah. That you know, let's break down the barrier of like you know, I've killed lots of people, and you know, you don't want to see me. You know, you don't want to see that side of me, sort of thing. And it's going like, all right, listen, right? I've been surrounded by guys who do this. Yeah, they'll tell me the numbers, says, but with you, you know, you don't do it for the for the guts, the glory, and all this sort yeah. of stuff, and for the you know to bull yourself up. And it's just like you know, uh, it's you're not a even revenge. Animal. It's weird, yeah. Which yeah, you understand. Like, you, know, you are you are a different animal. Yeah. And why do you do it? Yeah. It's you know. Very, it's very yeah. It's, yeah. All, all the moves that you guys had with each other were were it's, it's a it's a joy to watch. Let me tell you. Thank you so oh, much. Great. For doing I'm this. delighted to hear. I mean, it's like. You know, you're given an opportunity like this, and you know, essentially free, you know, free reigns. Uh, and working with Michael is a, is an absolute trip. I mean, he's such a consummate actor, a very, very, very giving actor. Um, and through other, and it's you know, it's like you start mining in, in a scene, and you just dig deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, and both people are just you know, coming up trumps and digging just subtle. It becomes really exciting. It seems yeah. like on the page. Um, you know, reams of dialogue and everything, but it plays. When you play, you go like, "Oh, uh, are we finished the scene already?" <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's that present. Uh, he's an absolute superstar. Uh, well, he uh, really. he he. In some ways, he he, he uh, shaped our storytelling this season. I don't know if you knew this or not, but he because uh, we had that moment in episode three where the yeah. two of you meet up in the in the strip club and you both are sort of uh-huh. outsiders there. But that that happened because Michael. Wanted to have scenes with you. <laughs> he was like, "When can we get? We got to get these two guys together. We got to make this work out." Oh, wow! Yeah. Well, that's, no, I, 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 I had no idea. I'm just receiving episodes as they arrive. I yeah. have no idea. Obviously, I mean, I know he's he's exacting on the show as well, and uh, and has a huge impact, obviously. And um, but um, that's, I mean, again, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's great to hear. So, yeah, it's a so. testament to 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 what a great actor you are and what you brought to this role. And uh, you should have killed a, me. Shouldn't have, should have sent me off on my private jet. <laughs> I love it. Oh man, you know what? I'm uh, sincerely blessed. Every time I go to work, I'm privileged to uh, to work with, with with great people. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. This Thank was you, man. Thank you so much again. Very revealing about Isaac Serko. Um, it's a great season. Thank, Thank you again. You. All right, bye bye. Right. Well, that's it. That's the end. But don't worry, it's going to happen again and again. It has to happen. Have a good week. 